Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be making this hoodie, uh, which you can choose to make together with me. Uh, so I have called this the raincoat hoodie. Uh, well, obviously it is not real waterproof, but I have based the the look on a raincoat. Okay, so this is what I imagine a raincoat really looks like. This is what the, the first comes into my mind. Okay, so we have these little ropes right here, which you can adjust if you need. I have got uh, these cord locks, which are a beautiful detail. It looks really, really nice. And it's exactly the same on the hood right here. You can adjust it as you want. So I have got something uh, for older children in this stitch, well actually for older girls. So I decided to do something in baby size. So anything from 0 to 3 to 9 to 12 months you can make with me. And the sleeves. Okay, so this is a size uh, 3 to 6 months. You can see this is the back of it so really quite simple we have a little hidden cord running in there in the middle of the hoodie uh, then I have got a size six to nine months this is very bright I have made this in support for uh, to Ukraine uh, in Ukrainian flag colors so but everything is exactly the same it's just that I have used two colors and the bottom one as you can see is really really bright and round buttons everything exactly the same and the very last one that I'm going to show you that I have already made is a size um, 9 to 12 months so this is the biggest one that I offer you okay so you can see I have used beautiful kind of I don't know, is that blue? Is it sky blue color that looks beautiful next to this kind of pale orange? As you can see right here. So size is not an issue. Uh, as I do not have a size 0 to 3 months, this time I will be making the size, the very, very smallest one because I have all others. So you choose your yarn, you choose your little details, whatever buttons that you want. And if you got interested into making one of these with me, let's go and get started on this raincoat hoodie. Okay, so to make this hoodie, you're definitely going to need a measuring tape in centimeters because I will be giving you a size chart and we will need uh, to measure. So, have one of these. Then stitch markers. If you have, uh, you might want to take 10 of them. I only have five. So I will have some uh, needles that I will have to use uh, to mark a few things, but you definitely need at least five of them. Then a needle to hide your tails. Uh, buttons. Now at this uh, this size, the size that I will be making now is going to be zero to three months. So it is uh, a slightly smaller um, hoodie so I will most likely only need four of these but I have five just in case and you don't need to use uh, toggle buttons it can be brown buttons uh, if you have them but I just like the look of them so I have five of these then I have these cord locks uh, another thing that you don't really have to use but these are uh, a nice little detail so I've got this one here so these are to go on to the string like this, but if you don't have them, do not worry. You can just make a little knot at the end or closer to here and uh, it will be just fine. But I have four of these in black, then a hook, so a four millimeter hook and yarn, any kind of lightweight number three yarn, uh, DK, double knit, whatever you call it, there is approximately uh, 285 meters in the one that I will be using. This is from Ice Yarns. You choose your brand. Uh, brand absolutely doesn't matter as long as it is the same weight and the color is completely up to you as well. So, <clears throat> uh, how much yarn you're going to need? Now, I am presuming for that for the size 0 to 3 months, I will only need two skeins, approximately 200 grams. I have used the same amount uh, of yarn for three to six months. 
size now six to nine and nine to twelve months I needed two hundred and fifty so two hundred and a half of another skein so I have three just in case but I am pretty sure that two will be absolutely enough for me so I've got this in color gold okay so I think I have mentioned everything I have the charts ready and we can go on and start on our hoodie okay so to start grab your hook measuring tape four stitch markers I have the chart right here and have your yarn ready we're going to first of all we're going to make a slip knot and now we're gonna have a look at the chart so this is uh, not very difficult okay so as you can see on this side right here these are the sizes 0 to 3 months 3 to 6 6 to 9 months and 9 to 12 months and the, on the other side right here is the length of our starting chain okay so uh, as I will be making 0 to 3 months I will I need my uh, starting chain to be approximately 33 centimeters in length now, 3 to 6 months, it's 35 centimeters. 6 to 9 months, it's 38. And 9 to 12 months, it's approximately 40 centimeters in length. Now, we know the length. And here on this side, the top number right here is a number of chains. Okay, so I will chain 47 and I will measure the length of it. If this uh, reaches 33 centimeters, I will be happy to use this number. If it's not enough, I'm going to go for 53 chains. Not enough, 59, 65, 71, and 77. I just have to find that one number of chains that is the closest to the total length that I need. So, I remember 33 centimeters and I'm going to start chaining. I will try 47 chains first, so I'm going to start chaining. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and I will keep going until I have 47. So I have chained 47 right here. Now I'm going to measure the length of it. I'm going to put my measuring tape down like this. I'm going to put my very first chain at the beginning of the measuring cha chain uh, of the me measuring tape and I'm just going to give it a tiny little pull okay just to stretch it out a, a little bit so I'm ap approximately at 29 centimeters I need 33 this is a little bit too short for me so I'm going to add so I have 47 chains I'm going to go for 53 so 47 48 49 50 51, 52, and 53. I will measure again. I need 33 centimeters like this. I'm just going to give it a tiny little pull. And as you can see, I am at exactly 33 centimeters. Now, you, you need to do exactly the same. You just need to find that number that is the closest with a little bit of pull. If you have the choice of being a little short or a little bit over, uh, you should probably choose the shorter Okay, so maybe 65, maybe let's say you need 38 centimeters and uh, if you chain 65, you are at 36 or if you chain 71, you're at 40 centimeters. So you would rather choose the, um, the shorter chain a little bit. Okay, so you just need to find that number of chains that is the closest. So with a little bit of pull, as you can see, I am at 33 centimeters so zero to three months okay so now uh, once we know uh, the number of chains that we are working with you're gonna have to look at the numbers underneath okay so I'm working with 53 I will be looking at these numbers right here okay if you are, you have this number you're gonna look at these numbers and so on so to start the next row we are going to add one extra chain for turning so add one more chain now skip that chain that you have just made and into the second chain from the hook make a single crochet and continue with one single crochet into each chain to the end of the row and you should have the same number of single crochets as you had um, chained okay so I should have 53 single crochets at the end so keep going I'll see you at the at the other side of our chain okay so single crochet is finished now we are going to start our first repeat row before that we need to mark these 
stitches okay so I need to put a marker in the stitch number 7 in the stitch number 19 stitch number 35 and stitch number 47 so have a look underneath the number that you have chained what numbers are written down okay so I need 7, 19, 35 and 47 I'm gonna start counting from where I have finished right now so I need seven so this is one two three four five six seven I mark that number seven right here then I need 19 so this was seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen this is number nineteen then it is 35 for me uh, this is 19 so 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 and 35 and one more I have number 47 this is 35 36 7 8 9 40 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. And you should have a few stitches left right here, okay? So these are going to be our corners. Now to start our first row of repeat, we are going to chain one and turn. We're going to put a single crochet right back into that very very first stitch under the chain one so single crochet after that we're going to chain one and skip a stitch then single crochet into the next one chain one and skip a stitch single crochet chain one skip a stitch right here and then the next stitch for me is the stitch marker so once you get to the stitch marker in the that stitch you're going to put a single crochet let me take that out then you're going to chain two one and two and put another single crochet back in there back into the same stitch now you're going to mark that chain two space and continue on so once you have the single crochet right here from the corner you're going to chain one skip a stitch single crochet chain one skip single crochet chain one skip and keep going chain one and then I skip one again I have my stitch marker and I'm gonna put a single crochet chain two and a single crochet back into that same stitch I'm gonna move my stitch marker to the chain two space and continue on so after you make a corner you start with chain one skip a stitch and keep going like this until you finish this row so the other two stitch markers have exactly the same so single crochet chain two single crochet single crochet chain two, chain two single crochet and I'm gonna see you at the very end right here okay so I am at the very end of the repeat row two uh, excuse me a repeat row one and I have two stitches left made a single crochet so chain one skip one stitch and the very last stitch is a single crochet just like that now we do not need this anymore I'm gonna move this away okay so we're going to start repeat row two and remember this row because this is uh, going to be the same throughout the hoodie we're going to chain one and turn we're going to make a double crochet into that very first stitch or the very last single crochet from the previous row whichever way you look at it right here underneath so in into that stitch make a double crochet 
Now we are going to crochet clusters into each of the chain one space. So you're going to yarn over, go into the chain one space, the very, very first one, make a half double crochet halfway through and stop. That is one. You're going to yarn over again, go into that same space, pull out your yarn, yarn over, pull through two loops and stop. This is the second half double, uh, double crochet halfway through. And one more, yarn over, back into that same chain one space, pull it out, yarn over, pull through two loops, and now we're going to finish this cluster, yarn over and pull through all four loops that are on the hook and chain one. So this is the cluster of free double crochets. Now don't forget to chain one after each cluster. Then you're gonna yarn over, find the next chain one space and make a cluster again. So double crochet number one halfway through stop, yarn over back into the same space, double crochet halfway through two and one more double crochet halfway through three times, yarn over and pull through all four loops and chain one. I have one more chain one space before the corner, so one, two, and three, pull through all four loops and chain one. Now then, uh, then I have my corners, so all corners are going to be the same, so I'm going to take this out. I am going to make a cluster in the chain 2 space in the corner, so 1, 2 and 3, pull through, then I'm going to chain 2 in the corners with chain 2. So chain one and chain two, and I'm going to make a second cluster back into that same chain two space. So one, two, and three, pull through all four loops and chain one. Now at this moment we have finished this corner, mark the chain two space, and keep going with clusters into each chain one space. So this is the next one. One, two, and three. Pull through, chain one. And keep going. I will show you one more corner. I just need to get there quickly. Lost everything, okay. And one more before the corner. Chain one and again, stitch marker. I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna make a cluster in that chain two space. One, two, and three pull, chain two, one and two, and another cluster back into that same chain two space. One, two, and three, pull through all loops and chain one. Mark that chain two space and keep going, making one cluster into each chain one space, uh, chain one after each cluster. The corners are exactly the same. You have two clusters with chain two in between and I'm just going to see you right here at the end of the repeat row two. I am at the end of the repeat row two and I have one chain one space left and this is important just try to remember okay so we make a cluster into that last chain one space 
Now I'm gonna pull through all loops and after that very very last cluster you do not chain one otherwise you are gonna have a kind of a hole right here okay so if you don't chain right here it comes out nice and neat so no chaining just a double crochet into that very very last stitch at the edge right here and this is it this is not very difficult and look what we have okay uh, so I'm gonna show you the repeat row one now it is slightly different um, we're still doing the single crochets in the chain one it's just that we have clusters now instead of single crochets that we had before so chain one and turn remember how it starts and ends we're gonna make a single crochet into that very very first stitch now you're going to chain one <clears throat> and you will start making your single crochets in between the clusters so in between single crochet then you're gonna chain one in between the clusters single crochet chain one single crochet chain one and once you get to your stitch marker again this is going to be the corner so we are going to make a single crochet in the chain two space chain two one two and single crochet back into that chain one space mark your chain two space then you start with a chain one skip a cluster single crochet chain one skip a cluster and you just keep going like that until you get to your next corner i have a little tangled here okay so chain one single crochet chain one single chain single chain and again stitch marker take that out single crochet chain two and single crochet back into that same chain two space mark this and then keep going so after you make the corner you start with a chain one and single crochet so you just keep doing this for the repeat row one and they will all be exactly the same so I'm gonna see you at the end and to finish this row sorry okay so to finish this row I have made a single crochet in between the two last uh, clusters right here you're gonna chain one and make a single crochet into the very very last stitch or the one closest to the edge like this and you're done with your repeat row one and again these are going to be exactly the same so remember the start and the finish now the next row is again repeat row two it is exactly exactly the same as the first time uh, we made it I'm just going to remind you the beginning so chain one turn you make a double crochet back into that very very first stitch and start your very first cluster into the first chain one space so one two and three pull chain one and keep going until you get to your corner chain one now the next is the chain to a space that is that has a stitch marker in so that means that in that chain to space I'm gonna make a cluster I'm gonna chain two and another cluster back into that same chain to a space so one two and three pull through and chain one mark that chain 
to space and keep going with your clusters into ch each chain one space. Of course, where you have the stitch markers, you're going to have two clusters. I think that is all clear. That is uh, quite straightforward right here. Uh, the only thing, uh, the only another thing to remember is once you make your last cluster in your last chain one space right here, uh, after the cluster, you do not chain one. You just finish with a double crochet into the very, very last stitch. Then your edge is going to be very nice and straight and neat. Okay, uh, so for now, we just keep going, swapping around those two uh, or uh, repeating those two rows. And I will come back once I have my yoke uh, big enough to show you what we have to measure before we uh, connect. So for now, you just keep going. I'll see you in a couple of seconds. And my yoke is done. I am ready to connect. Now we need to do a few, uh, a little bit of measuring, okay? So let's have a look first of all. We're going to have a look at this chart right here. And we're going to find the yoke, okay? So 0 to 3 months, 3 to 6 months, 6 to 9, 9 to 12 months. And this is in centimeters. Yoke. For zero to three months, the size that I am making is ten and a half centimeters. Okay? So you look up yours, whichever size that you are making. Now we're going to measure this part right here. Uh, and one very important thing is that you have to be, when you are measuring, your last row that you have finished has to be the cluster row or the repeat row too. Okay? So we are all on the same uh, row uh, afterwards. So when you measure, you want to go from the top measuring all that corner. So if you look at mine, I am at 10 and a half centimeters. This is perfect. Uh, I couldn't ask for a better measurement. Now when you measure this, you can be a half of a centimeter short to the measurement that you have here. So let's say uh, for three to six months, you can be 10 and a half centimeters in length at the moment because the next row, we're going to have a single crochet right here, which is going to extend our length for about, you know, half of a centimeter. So you will reach that length. Now, don't worry if you are over the measurement. It's absolutely fine, uh, just because uh, we don't have uh, a lot of choice, you know. Uh, it's better to be over the measurement than to be short, okay? So you have to be either half of a centimeter short to the yoke length, or you can be over that. No problem with that. Okay, so once uh, you know that this is okay, we are going to measure the back side from stitch marker to stitch marker and see if we're missing any length on the circumference. Okay, so this is the chest circumference. So 46 centimeters, 48, 50 or 52. Now, as we're only measuring a half of it, this is the full circumference, meaning all the way around the chest, okay? We're only measuring the half, so we need a half of this measurement. So. Uh, I'm going to divide my 46 into 2 and I end up with 23 centimeters for a half of a cardigan. Okay, so again, uh, you divide into 2, so this will be 24, 25, and 26 centimeters. I'm looking for 23. Now, I'm not going to pull on it, I'm just going to lay it down flat. And I'm going to measure from one stitch marker to another. Let me see. So I am at about 20, 20 and a half centimeters. So I am approximately two and a half, three centimeters short to the circumference. That means that I need to make up the missing length by chaining underneath each armhole. Now, how much to chain? So once you know how much you're missing, so I'm approximately two and a half, three centimeters, you want to Pick your work up like this where you can see your stitches. You're going to uh, put your measuring tape at the side like this and you're going to see how many uh, stitches fit into that missing length. So, And it has to be an odd number of stitches and a minimum of three, okay? Even if you're not really missing anything or you're missing just a little bit, you're still going to have to put three 
chains underneath and it has to be an odd number so three five or seven seven perhaps is a little bit much but it, it might um, happen like that so I'm gonna see so this is my three centimeters and I'm gonna see one two three four five I'm missing uh, I need to chain five under each uh, underneath each armhole to make up for the missing length around the chest so five right here and five right here like I said uh, it's a minimum of three just because we're gonna have it's gonna be much much easier to do the um, uh, sleeves after that and even if that takes you over the chest measurement you're gonna have a strap right here underneath so you can pull it in and it's not gonna uh, be much bigger than it should be okay so once we know how many chains we have to do we are going to start the single crochet chain one uh, row so single crochet chain one uh, from now on the rows start and finish exactly the same the only thing uh, different is that we will not have any more increasing in the corners because we have finished with the yoke so get to that stitch marker now single crochet where the stitch marker is then you're gonna chain the missing chain so at least three I need five so one two three four five I'm gonna find the next stitch marker and I'm gonna put in a single crochet there so this is going to be my sleeve so after the single crochet I'm gonna chain one and keep going with the pattern Now I have the other stitch marker, so single crochet where the stitch marker is. Then you need to uh, chain the same amount of chains as underneath the other side. So I have five, one, two, three, four, and five. So find the next stitch marker, make sure it's not twisted. Single crochet and keep going with the pattern until you finish the row okay so I'll quickly finish this row and I'll start the next one I'll uh, get with the clusters as close as I can to the chains right here and we're gonna see how we will keep going with the pattern right here so I have made as many clusters as I can as I have chain one spaces this is my last one and then you can see I have my chains right here okay so I chained one now we're going to make clusters in every second stitch okay so I'm gonna skip that stitch from the single crochet into the first chain out of my five I'm gonna make a cluster it's just because we don't have chain one spaces we just need to make those clusters in chains okay so then you're gonna skip a chain into the next chain you make a cluster chain one now I have more chains if you you might if you had only three chains you're gonna have two extra um, clusters underneath your armhole so then you just go into the next chain one space and keep going now I have one more cluster underneath so I'm gonna skip one chain into the fifth chain I end up doing another cluster so I have three extra clusters I'm gonna chain one and then I will start into the chain one space and keep going with the pattern I will do exactly the same underneath uh, the next armhole or the other armhole and that will be it we are going to have uh, repeat rows one and two as usual apart from the fact that we are finished with the uh, corner so our pattern will go 
back and forth all the time. Okay, so for the next few rows, it is very, very simple. You just start and finish exactly the same and uh, you do the pattern. Uh, and I will see you now from the armhole, okay? So we have a cluster row here. We want to do another row of single crochets and chain one space. Then a cluster row and again one more time uh, single crochets and chain one space. So we want to have four rows underneath our armhole and then I will come back and we will do uh, a little bit of increasing just to make that shape a tiny little bit wider. It's gonna not going to be a whole lot, just a little bit, but it adds up to that shape that I am looking for. Okay, so I have four rows underneath my armhole right here. Since I uh, connected my yoke, so I have one, two, three, and four. This is the single crochet chain, one space row is the last one. Let's do some uh, increasing. Now you want to get five stitch markers uh, by five because uh, I'm gonna have five increases now if you want it wider at the bottom you can do more of course you just have to space them out so um, that all increases are not just at the back okay so you want kind of uh, you want some in the front some perhaps uh, underneath the armholes if you are gonna have more than five you know and then like at the back at the back whatever you just space them out so they are not all in one side of the cardigan okay so I need another one here uh, and our increases are going to be very very simple so you're gonna have to find five places where we are going to do them so first place you want to do somewhere before the armhole and you're gonna find a single crochet somewhere before it doesn't have to be very accurate and it's the single crochet stitch that you want to mark okay so I have the chain one space before and chain one space after you want to mark another one right approximately behind the armhole so I'm gonna mark this again it's a single crochet and not a chain one one approximately at the middle again a single crochet and the same on the other side one before the armhole so this one and one after so a little bit in the front so that one right here like I said it doesn't have to be very accurate they just have to be spaced out okay so now all we need to do is we need to keep making those clusters into each chain one space until we get to our first stitch marker. I'm very close to my first stitch marker. I have the chain one space right before it. I'm gonna make a cluster there. Chain one. Now exactly where the stitch marker is into the stitch I'm gonna make a cluster. So this is my increase. I just increase it in this single crochet and then the chain one space right after that. Again, I'm going to make a cluster and chain one. So we kind of insert an extra cluster in between. Okay, there should be only two here, but we have three. And this is all that we are going to do when you get to that uh, stitch marker in that single crochet stitch you're gonna make an extra cluster and I will end up with five extra clusters at the end of this row so another stitch marker there's a chain one before it cluster there chain one then there's my single crochet and into that single crochet I make a cluster and then the chain one space right behind it a cluster and keep going with the pattern so the next row that you're going to do single crochets and chain one spaces you do uh, single crochet chain one single crochet in between 
each cluster. And that's all the risk to the increasing. And then you just keep going uh, until you reach the length of your uh, hoodie. Okay, so I'm not going to show this anymore. This is exactly the same as we did right here. Now, uh, like I said, the next step is to get the length of our hoodie. Now, I base the length of my cardigans or hoodies uh, on the length of the sleeve, okay? So the sleeve length right here for the size that I'm making, so it is 15 centimeters. You're making bigger, you're gonna have bigger numbers right here, okay? You look at your numbers. So my sleeve is going to measure from the armhole right here, 15 centimeters this way. Now I want the full length of my cardigan to be the same length as the sleeve, so 15 and plus approximately two and a half three centimeters okay so 15 plus two and a half will be 17 and a half 18 centimeters in total lengthwise so i want the full length to be uh, two and a half three centimeters longer than my sleeves are going to be so my sleeves would end here but my cardigan or the hoodie will be a little bit longer hopefully that makes sense uh, so you add two and a half three centimeters to the length of the sleeve and then when you measure you measure from the from right here so now it measures approximately five and a half centimeters so I need to keep going for another so you can see I want it to be about 17 and a half 18 so approximately here I need to do to Keep, keep the pattern going for the ne for another uh, 12 centimeters or so. So we'll see when we have the length done. And so I have finished the length of my hoodie. Now to measure, I'm not gonna pull on it, I'm just gonna st uh, kind of, you know, tap it down just so it's lying straight. Then I'm gonna measure from the armhole down and I am at 17 and a half centimeters, so two and a half centimeters centimeters longer than my sleeves are going to be. I'm happy with that, especially for the little ones, for the really, really small sizes, um, for the babies that are only pretty much going to be lying down, the length is not uh, very important. Okay, so the next part is we're going to do the edges right here and the buttonholes. Now I have to say I have finished on a cluster row. I'm just gonna leave it like this. I'm not gonna touch the bottom. It just looks nice and neat like this. So you have to decide which side you want to have your buttons uh, buttonholes on. So as I personally think of this hoodie as a gender neutral, I think it's for boys and for girls. You know, you just really kind of. Um, you know, pick out the color if you're going one way or another. Uh, this is really a neutral color, so I will do it on the left hand side, under my left hand, on the side that I'm going to crochet on now. Uh, I usually do it for the girls on this side, or for gen uh, gender neutrals if I'm making these. Now, if uh, I would be making for boys, I would be doing my buttonholes on the right hand side. Both sides are going to be exactly the same, you can just choose and do the buttonholes on the other side. Okay, so to start, so where you finished, right here, you're going to chain one and start making single crochets. Now we want to make two single crochets into each double crochet on the edge right here. So this is double crochet. I'm going to have a single crochet in the uh, kind of a right side of it and the left and then where the single crochets are with the rows we're starting with single crochets I'm gonna have another single crochet in here so pretty much three single crochets in in two rows in the side of the two rows like this so I've chained one one single crochet in the bottom of that double crochet and one single crochet in the top of that double crochet and then there's the single crochet you can see from the single crochet chain one space row, single crochet there, and again one, two, and three. One, two, and three. 
one, two, three. And keep going like that to the top corner right here. Okay, so I'm finishing right here. I'm gonna do one more single crochet just to get higher up to that very, very top corner. Uh, so the next row is very, very simple. We are going to chain one, turn, and single crochet into each stitch all the way down to the bottom. Finished with the second row, now I am going to mark out where my buttonholes are going to be. Again, remember if you have decided that you are going to have buttonholes on the other side, if you are making it for a boy, just uh, keep going with one single crochet for the third row, the fourth and the fifth, okay? You don't need buttonholes here because you're going to have it on the other side. Now, um, okay, so I'm going to mark the fourth stitch from the top, one, two, three and four. This is going to be my first buttonhole. I will be skipping this and this stitch, so I'm gonna have two more stitches at the end. Now I'm going just to really visibly, uh, like I just uh, put in a stitch mark. I'm gonna count how many stitches I have in between. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so nine stitches in between the buttonholes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Number ten, I mark. You can do. Uh, you can have less stitches in between or more, depending on how uh, close to each other you want your buttons to be. I just want them, you know. Just a few centimeters, what is that? Probably like five centimeters in between. Uh, and I'll probably have four buttons then. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Yeah, so this is really close to the bottom, so um, I don't even have space for the fifth one. I could make smaller, uh, smaller distance in between the stitch markers and I could fit in the fifth, but it is a small piece, so I'll just keep four buttonholes for this one. Okay, so to make your buttonholes, uh, it would be great if you could have a button next to you. So you're gonna chain one and turn and all the way up to the stitch marker. You're just gonna make one single crochet into each stitch. Now I'm going to skip this, the two stitches, the stitch marker and the next stitch, so I'm going to chain two. I'm going to skip those two stitches, one, two, single crochet, and keep going. Now it's always a good idea to try your buttonholes, are they big enough or are they not too big for your buttons? I'm going to go in there so it comes in easily and it will hold on nicely there. So I'm happy with this. If you need them bigger, you can do more chains and skip more stitches uh, underneath. Or if you need it smaller, you can just chain one and skip one stitch. Then the, the buttonholes will be tiny. And I'm just going to do exactly everything exactly the same all the way up to the top. So. Again, stitch marker, so I'm going to chain two, skip one, two stitches, single crochet, and keep going all the way to the top. I'm going to finish my last buttonhole. So one and two. So this was row three. Now I'm going to chain one and turn. I'm starting row four. Single crochet back into that very first stitch, into the next one. Once you get uh, to your chains, you are going to make as many single crochets uh, in that ch uh, chain space as you have skipped stitches underneath. So I have skipped two stitches, so I'm going to make two single crochets in the chain space. And continue on with one single crochet. Okay, so I think this is clear. 
I'm gonna do exactly the same at each buttonhole and then once I get down to the bottom I'm gonna chain one turn around and make the last fifth row of single crochets up to here finished with that I have chained one and I'm going to cut my yarn and pull out my tail and that is finished five rows of single crochets now we're gonna have to do uh, everything uh, the same on the other side uh, the only difference is that I don't need buttonholes on this and we are going to start at the top corner right here so uh, I will just a quick reminder of how to start okay, so I'm gonna start at the very very top right here I am going to chain one and single crochet then there's the single crochet row right here so single crochet and then there's a double crochet so one two single crochets in that then it's the single crochet row one and then double crochet one and two and you just keep going like that for five rows and that that's all there is to it so I'm gonna finish that uh, when I come back I will be finishing uh, part one uh, I will have my buttons now I will show you one button how I sew it on uh, if it's interesting for somebody but for now we finish that we clean up the edges and put in the buttons and now I'm going to quickly show you how I uh, sew in the toggle buttons. So I just take a piece of yarn, leave it a little bit longer, it is easier to work with then. I take a good needle, a thick needle, uh, because you can see the hole on these toggle buttons, it goes in easily. Then I'm going to match the place through the buttonhole and make sure that the lines on both sides are pretty much at the same level and the, the bottom is nice and neat. I'm gonna put my needle in and my needle is now in the place where my button has to be so I'm just gonna go from underneath so like this okay so before I pull my needle out I'm gonna make a slip knot right here I'm gonna leave a long tail so a long tail with a slip knot I'm gonna pull this out and I go into the button over and into the other side in and pull now on the inside I'm gonna catch my slip knot, go into the slip knot with a needle and I'm just gonna take those both sides now and I'm gonna pull tight and that's it. I'm gonna go back outside into the toggle button again in the other way out. Uh, you can go around more times if you want I'm just gonna have it um, twice now whatever whatever is left I'm just gonna make a simple knot one and two and I'm just gonna hide those tails and that is how I do my toggle buttons now this would probably not work with a um, round buttons I do sew them in similar in a similar way but obviously you cannot use uh, most likely you cannot use a big needle and a thick yarn because the holes are probably smaller so you're gonna have to do to do it with a thread okay and that is it I have one more tail to hide if you want to see this is the very bottom tail and I'm gonna go from the so this is the inside of the hoodie and I'm gonna go from the bottom up in between the single crochet stitches I'm gonna first I'm gonna pull tight and I'm just gonna pull it out so it looks nice and as straight as possible and then one more time the other way 
and that is it this is how I hide my tails cut and done okay so this is the end of part one so this is what I have right now and in part two we're going to finish everything up sleeves hood the little belts the little locks the rope we're gonna do everything there uh, for now I'm gonna tell say um, bye I'll see you in the part two all the best of luck